The companies we're going to look at are Real Matters and MyTech Systems. We'll start with Real Matters. Real Matters is a technology company that provides services for mortgage lending and insurance companies. It trades on the Toronto Stock Exchange. And I input the free cash flow, net income, and revenue for four years into the model. And as you can see, they had negative free cash flow one year and negative net income in three years. Their revenue is pretty good. It's fairly steady, not really increasing too much. So it may be a little difficult valuing this company with so many negatives. They have no debt. The beta is 1.26, so the stock is not too volatile, a little more volatile than the market. And the model shoots at a value of the company of $7.95, even though it's trading at $26.45. So it's trading at a pretty significant premium. Let's see what Simply Wall Street says. They're also saying the stock is overvalued. They say it's worth $16.44, even though it's trading at $27. Let's see where the stock has been trading at. So it looks like it was trading pretty close to what I valued them at a few years ago, but it's really been driven up with coronavirus. I guess it's a type of stock that's gonna do well in this type of environment. Like I said earlier, it's really hard to value a company with so many negatives. The way a discounted cash flow model works is it looks at the prior financial information and uses that to estimate the future. Let's look at the financial ratios. They have a bad P.E., a bad price of sales, and a bad price to book. So P.E. is stock price over earnings per share. To calculate earnings per share, that's net income over shares outstanding. I like to see below 15, they're at 249. So investors are paying $249 for $1 of earnings. Price of sales is stock price over earnings per share. To calculate earnings per share, that's revenue over shares outstanding. I like to see below 2.5, they're at 6.9. So investors are paying $7 for $1 revenue. Price to book is stock price over book value per share. To calculate book value per share, that's equity over shares outstanding. I like to see below 3.5, they're at 13.1. So investors are paying $13 for $1 book value. They have a high current ratio and a bad ROE. Current ratio is current assets over current liabilities. So they have more than enough current assets to cover their current debts and payables. ROE is net income over equity. They don't provide the best value to the equity holder. They only have 5% ROE. I like to see above 20%. You should always compare ratios to similar companies. That's how you'll know if they're really good or not. And I've done videos of Datadog, Intuit, Canaxis, MyTech, Mogo, Texas, and the Trade Desk, all in the same industry as Real Matters. In Real Matters, if their number is in green, they're better than the average. If they're in red, they're worse than the average. So these numbers are pretty skewed because the average PE is negative 3,700 because Datadog has a negative 30,000 PE. So that's why real is better than average in PE, but 249 is not a good PE. They also have better than average price of sales and price to book. So even though I said they have bad ratios, I was comparing them to the entire market, but in their industry, they're actually better than average. Current ratio, they're higher than average, but you don't really need more than 2.0 current ratio. They are better than the average in ROE just because the average in the industry is negative. And they have no debt, like Datadog, Canaxis, MyTech, and the Trade Desk. They are smaller than the average company. The average in the industry is 15 billion US dollars. They're 1.7 billion US dollars. I converted it from Canadian dollars to US dollars. And the other company which is the same industry is MyTech Systems. And MyTech Systems is a software company that specializes in digital identity verification. This is a really small company. It's only 523 million market cap and they're trading a little under $13 a share. They do have positive free cash flow every year, which is good. They do have two years of negative net income and their revenue is growing each year, so that's good. It is much more difficult valuing small companies that don't have consistent positive numbers. They also have no debt. Their beta is really low, 0.27, so it's a really low risk stock. And their weighted average cost of capital is 4.4%. That's how much it costs this company to obtain financing. And that's a discount rate we're going to apply to the future cash flows. 
So we estimated four years of future free cash flows, that's up here in blue. We also estimated a terminal value, 126 million, that's also in blue. We discounted those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital, that's in green. We get a value of the company of $166 million. If we divide that by 41 million shares, we get a calculated stock price of $4. They're trading at 1267, so they're trading at a 214% premium. Simply Wall Street says a stock is worth $28, so they are projecting greater growth in the future. My expectations are based off of their prior financial information. Let's see where the stock has been trading at. It looks like it's at its all time high. So the stock could go much higher and higher if the market feels that way and it pushes the price up. Let's look at their financial ratios. They have a negative PE and they have a weak price of sales and a weak price to book. So PE is stock price over earnings per share. To calculate earnings per share, that's net income over shares outstanding. They have negative net income, so negative PE. Price of sales is stock price over sales per share. To calculate sales per share, that's revenue over shares outstanding. I like to see below 2.5, they're at 6.2. So investors are paying $6 for $1 of revenue. Price to book is stock price over book value per share. To calculate book value per share, that's equity over shares outstanding. I like to see below 3.5, they're at 5. So investors are paying $5 for $1 of book value. They have a good current ratio and a negative ROE. Current ratio is current assets over current liabilities, so they can easily cover their current liabilities. ROE is net income over equity. They have negative net income, so they have negative ROE. The best way to look at ratios is to compare them to similar companies. I've done videos on Datadog, Intuit, Canaxis, Mogo, Real Matters, Texas, and the Trade Desk. And my tech is here in the middle. If they have a number in green, they're better than the average. If they're in red, they're worse than the average. So they do have a negative PE, and they're better than the average just because the average in industry is such a large negative. But in terms of price to sales and price to book, they're better than the average. They do have the best price to book of all the companies, so they have the best balance sheet. Current ratio, they are a little worse than the average, but 2.7 is fine. They have no debt, which is great. And they're a really small company, only 523 million market cap. So let me know what you think of the video. Leave a comment, I'll definitely answer. If you wanna see more stock valuation videos, then subscribe. Thanks for watching.